참 좋으신 하나님, 새로운 한해 2021년 주신 것 감사드립니다. 또 스크린 앞에 모여 앉아 첫 주일 예배를 드리게 하신 것 감사드립니다. 이 시간 우리 친구들 서로 만날 수 없지만 저희와 항상 함께 하시는 예수님, 우리의 구원자 되시고 우리의 삶의 주인이신 예수님은 꼭 만날 수 있기를 간절히 기도드립니다. 하나님 특별히 새해에는 저희 친구들 몸과 마음이 건강하여 키가 자라고 지혜가 자라길 원합니다. 또 새해는 하나님의 말씀을 더욱 잘 이해하고 꼭 지키며 살수 있기를 원합니다. 하지만 하나님 아시죠? 저희들은 약하고 때로는 넘어져 예수님의 마음을 아프게 할 때가 참 많이 있습니다. 하지만 저희 안에 계시는 강하신 예수님, 실수하지 않으시는 멋진 예수님만 꼭 붙들고 살수 있도록 도와주세요. 오늘도 우리 그레이스 전도사님 통해서 하나님의 말씀을 듣습니다. 마음은 활짝 열고 귀를 쫑긋 세우고 말씀에 집중하게 도와주세요. 다시 만나는 그 시간을 손꼽아 기다리며 세상의 바이러스와 죄와 모든 악에서 구원해 주실 예수님의 이름으로 기도드립니다. 아멘 I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will again to judge the king and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life ever standing. Amen.
Today's passage is taken from Haggai 2, 1 to 9. Haggai 2, 1 to 9. And the title of today's message is The Word of the Lord. Haggai 2, 1 to 9. On the 21st day of the seventh month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Son, speak to Zerubbabel, son of Shetel, governor of Judah, to Joshua, son of Josadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people. Ask them, who of you is left who saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Does it not seem to you like nothing? But now be strong, Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, Joshua, son of Josedach, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord. And work, for I am with you, declares the Lord Almighty. This is what I have covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, and my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations, and what is desired by all nations will come. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. Almighty. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. Amen. Amen. Okay, so today we're on we're in. We're in the book of Haggai. New Testament or Old Testament, y'all? Yep, you got it. The old. But hold up, guys. Doesn't this pa doesn't today's passage sort of sound familiar? Nope. Um, maybe. Yep, a little bit. Well, I hope it does. I hope it does. Because I took today's passage from our Wednesday's QT. Our Wednesday QT. Yeah? Yeah, I can feel, I, oh, I feel like I can hear some of you going, oh, yeah. I hope a lot of you are going like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> so before we get into it, into it, let's start off with some background information. So Haggai is one of the last of the is one of the last three books of the Old Testament. What are the last two, y'all? Yep, you got it. Zechariah and Bala. Kai. Now, the last three books of the Old Testament take us to a time take us to a time past the exile. So a time past the exile to a time when the Jews returned to their own country. Do you guys know what exile means? Yep. Nope. Maybe. <laughs> well, exile means when somebody is banished, like sent away, sent away from their own land. You're probably going, oh, how is that even possible? Well, way back then, Way back then, that's what people did. They would just invade other people's lands, other people's countries, and just take over. So hot, right? So hot. <laughs> so hot. <laughs> so the Jews had been exiled by the Babylonians, the Babylonians, for about 50 years. <gasps> Guys, imagine not being able to return to your country for 50 years. But today's passage, but today's passage takes us to a time after that. And the Jews had now returned to their homeland under the leadership of Zerubbabel, who's mentioned in verse 2. He's mentioned in verse 2 of today's passage as, quickly, find it for me, guys, as the governor of Judah. Right, as the governor of Judah. So Zerubbabel was their ruler. And as their ruler, he led the people into rebuilding God's temple. God's temple that had been destroyed by the Babylonians like 70 years ago when they invaded the land. Now everybody, everybody was really eager and excited to build that beautiful temple for God again. To meet with him, to worship him. And they were all like, great guys, let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But you know how in the beginning... We get really excited. We get really, really excited when we start a new project and just sort of get bored along the way. Like we get tired and then we're like, oh my goodness, I don't want to do this anymore. And then other things start to interest us. No, it's only me. It's only me. None of y'all are like this. 
really? Well then, teach me to be more like you guys, because because I'm so like this, guys. And I think that's what happened to the Israelites too. Initially, they were very excited about rebuilding God's temple. They were so excited, but then they just sort of lost interest. And they stopped building God's temple. And for years, for years and years and years, they just stopped building God's temple. They started to care about other things more. They started to care about themselves more. Worshiping God wasn't a priority anymore. Do you guys know what priority means? Uh, basically, basically, when we prioritize something, when we prioritize something, we make it more important than anything or everything else in our lives. Rebuilding the temple was not the Israelites' priority anymore. They became more interested in, well, themselves and their survival. They started to complain that life was hard, food and clothing was expensive, everything was just so expensive. Their priorities became themselves and their own concerns. And then they started to think less and less and less about God. And that's why we read in chapter 1, in chapter 1 of Haggai, that God stopped giving them good things. God stopped giving them good things. We all know that all good things come from whom? All good things come from God. It's God who chooses to give us good things, and it's God who chooses to withhold them from us. But did God just decide to forget the Israelites just like they forgot about him? Did he do that? Oh my gosh, thank God that's not how our God works. Nope. He sent his prophet Haggai to give the Israelites his word, to speak to the Israelites. And Haggai's words, well, God's words spoken through the prophet Haggai, strikes home with the Israelites. And they get their priority straight again. They get their priority straight again. Within three weeks, within just three weeks, after years of just doing nothing to the temple after like hearing Haggai speak just within three weeks of God sorry of God speaking to them through Haggai the Israelites work on the temple is resumed they start working on the temple again on God's temple on God's temple again and that's where today's passage starts off that's where today's passage starts off so now because it's it's like 70 years ago since that beautiful, 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 beautiful temple that who built for God? That King Solomon, that King Solomon built for God was destroyed by, by the Babylonians. And then the, and then the Israelites were exiled and couldn't return to their homeland for 50 years. Only a few, only a, a few of those who were building the temple now would have seen the one before you know, the Solomon one. And we read in verse three, God through Haggai asking the people, who of y'all have seen this house before it was destroyed? How does it look now? It's nothing. It's nothing compared to that one, right? Haggai calls the temple a house because way back then, a temple used to be known as a place where God's lived, a place where God lived. And I do picture, I picture, I picture that they would have been some Latte people. If y'all don't know what that means, ask your parents. They'll know. Like I picture, I picture some people going, yeah, back in my day, back in my day, this house was so, 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 so spectacular. Like words can't even describe. And, and now it's just like, nah, compared to what it was. And then the people who had never seen the one built before were like, oh, these guys again with their lattes. Okay, sorry, that's not the point. But like, even God, even God was saying, yeah, so it's not as pretty. It's not as pretty as the previous one, as the one before. But he takes us to what's really important, to what's really important. It's not about how pretty a building it is, but it's about his promise to his people that he is with them. So he tells Zerubbabel, he tells Joshua, he tells the people, who cares? Who cares if this building isn't as pretty as the one before? And who cares if it will never be? Who cares what people say? Guys, be strong, be strong and don't stop building it because, because I am with you. And that's all, that's all that matters. God's promise to us is that he is with us. 
why do you guys do the things you do? Usually we do the things we do because we expect like specific results. We expect results out of them. Like if we exercise, we expect to get healthy. If we do our homework, we expect not to fail. If we pay for something, we expect for something in return, right? But why do you guys watch these online services? Or when we gathered at Coma Lake, why did you guys come to church? Because mommy said so? Because mommy said so? Well, guys, our church's theme for 2021 is worship, worshiping in truth. What do we get out of worshiping God, guys? What do we get out of obeying God? My lovelies, we get God. We get God. Is that enough for you? Is that enough for you? Do you want more? Do you want things that you can touch, eat, use, actually see? Do you expect do you expect good things to happen to you because you come to church and worship God? Does God promise us things? God promises us himself. Everything belongs to God. He says, gold is mine, silver is mine. Everything is his. Is that why we worship him? Because everything is his? Is that why we worship him? Because everything is his? You know, God even tells the Israelites that he will make the temple, this temple, even better than the one before. How? How would he do that? Would he get the Israelites like pure, 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 pure gold and pure, 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 pure silver? God says that he will make this house great. This house great. And it would be filled with his glory. Because, verse 7, because verse 7, he says, he will shake the nations and what is desired by all nations will come. Do you guys know what God is talking about here, my lovelies? Jesus. He's talking about Jesus. Jesus is our heart's true desire. We think we want all these things to make us happy. And maybe they do make us happy for a while, like video games, clothes, money. Wait, are y'all into money? I feel like money isn't a thing for you yet. But my point is, we try to fill our lives with all these things that we think will make us happy. I'm not sure if y'all got this, but the book of Haggai is not really about rebuilding. It's not really about only rebuilding a temple. It's about being with God. It's about knowing to put him first. Not because of what he will or won't do for us, but because he's God. My lovelies, I want you to remember this, that even though he is God, even though he is God, does, does God need us for anything? Nope, he doesn't need us. But even though he is God, my babies, he, he's God. And even though he is God, he speaks to us first. And he loved us first. All we have to do is listen and obey. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you are God. You are creator of the heavens and the earth. You're God, and, let, and yet you let us call you Father. You let us call you friend. You let us come to you with our tiniest of problems. And Father God, you care. You are God of the universe, and yet you care. You come to us first. You speak to us first. You loved us first. Father God, help us. Help us to, to worship you in truth, in absolute truth, not because we want something out of it, but because this is what makes us happy. And it makes us happy because we believe that it makes you happy. Father, all we want to do is please you. All we want to be is pleasing to you. Father God, take our, accept, accept our worship. Help us to worship you more. Teach us to worship you more. Te teach us to be more truthful, more real. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Okay, so do you guys have your workbooks out? You have your workbooks out? Okay, get your workbook. 
what's happening here? Workbooks. <laughs> Get your workbooks out. And we're on page 44. 44 and 45. We're on page 44 and 45. So what you're going to do, you know the drill. You're going to pause me. You're going to pause me and then you're going to answer one, two, three, questions one, two, three, and then we're going to go over them together. So pause me. And now you've unpaused me. <laughs> okay, question one. Draw a circle on the word strong and a triangle on the words with you every time they appear in today's passage. I got strong three times, three times in verse four. Yeah, y'all got that too. And I got with you two times, two times. Once in verse four and once in verse five. So strong three times and with you two times. That's what I got. If I'm wrong, let me know y'all. Okay, question two. Who, to whom? To whom did Haggai speak the word of God? List all those whom Haggai spoke the word of God to. And the answer, well, yeah, the answer is given to us in verse two. So Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel, who was the governor of Judah. Joshua, who was a high priest and the remnant of the people, which means basically everyone, everyone else. So all the people, Zerubbabel, Joshua, and all the people. Number three, why should the people of Israel not be afraid, but be strong and courageous? And the answer is given to us in verse four and five, four, two, five, four, and five. <laughs> because, well, the answer is because who is with them? Who is with them, y'all? Because God is with them and he promised to be with them and his spirit remains where his spirit remains among them so because God is with them he promised to be with them and his spirit remains among them okay so did y'all have a good year I mean a good new year <laughs> did y'all have a good new year do you guys have any new year's resolutions Resol girls, what's happening with my English these days do you guys have any new year resolutions well, I hope, I hope that one of them is sending me your pictures because I really, 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 really like to see y'all's faces and how well you've done your notebook, your workbooks. So guys, this week, this week, as the new year begins, yeah? Those of you who haven't been, and those of you who have been, thank you so much. Just continue to send me your pictures. But those of you who haven't been, I know maybe you could, you're shy, but but send me your pictures. I love seeing them, okay? And have a blessed, blessed week, y'all. Bye.